What's up everybody? Today we're gonna do a Pink Floyd video. I wanted to talk about my favorite Pink Floyd songs, albums, and many more um, in this video. So stay tuned and there's gonna be a bunch of great stuff talked about. First of all, a lot of people have some great suggestions. I mean, the suggestions that you guys you know, have sent me are phenomenal. So keep sending them to me and, and they will get done eventually. I do do polls for the suggestions, but keep sending them. Um, some of these songs take a while, uh, you know, and, and when I'm filming videos with my mom, we try to do a lot in one month. So keep sending them and they will get done. One thing that I did learn that I found interesting I didn't know that David Gilmour had a solo career. Um, that's one thing I had no clue about. I thought Pink Floyd, when they you know, disbanded, that they were always together. And I didn't know that David Gilmour, and that's when I did the Comfortably Numb version from 2016, I was shocked to hear that David Gilmour was solo, you know, and, and the voice that he had was so phenomenal and, and so incredible for a guy that's by himself, you know, that doesn't have the backing, you know, of the other members that he had in that band. And also his age is phenomenal. The fact that he could do what he did at his age, phenomenal stuff, man. If I have to go with my favorite song, and this is a one that a lot of people have asked, it's going to have to be a different tiers. Um, first of all, uh, the first one's going to have to be a studio, then live song. Those would be the two tiers because you can't say favorite song with Pink Floyd. There isn't a favorite song. There is a favorite studio version song. And for the people that don't know what a studio song is, it's a song that's not performed live. You know, it would be a song that you would get when you buy an album or when you hear on the radio. Um, that's from an album, not a live version. It could be played live, but, you know, it's recorded with the thought of it being studio. You know, the thought of it being an actual record, not it being live. Um, so first, my favorite studio song. And a lot of people were shocked about this one. And I thought this was interesting because this is one that I thought I told you guys about a long time ago. And, and for this video today, I want to go my top five songs. Top five Pink Floyd songs I've ever heard. Um, I've done a lot. I've probably done 30, 40 Pink Floyd songs so far. Um, and I want to talk about why each one is my favorite. Um, and I'll also go into my mom's favorites as well in this video. Just so you guys know... Um, we've done so many videos and I just want to recap it, you know, give a video recapping my favorite songs, her favorite songs, all of that. She could be in the video here today, but you know, I know her favorite songs and eventually we'll get her in there as well. So number one, it's going to be wish you were here. I said it multiple times and this is for studio version. This isn't live studio version. Number one is going to be wish you were here. Um, without a doubt, that's my favorite. Um, I absolutely love, love, love that song. And I think so many elements of that song, the guitar parts in that song are so phenomenal. And, and the message and the overall just feeling that that song gives you, it's such a peaceful song. We reacted to that yesterday, but as you guys know, I heard that song three, four years ago. That's a song I listen to regularly. And that's one thing I wanted to do with these videos is you guys don't know my personal life. I listen to these songs regularly. I listen to these songs every day. You know, it's not just a, a reaction and it, it's gone. Some songs I do. Some songs I don't like. Um, you know, most songs I do, 99%, but there'll be a song from time to time that I just don't like. And I'm not going to listen to it on my free time. But in terms of songs that I do, um, that song is very heavy into my rotation. At number two, it's going to be Comfortably Numb. Um, the studio version, of course. We're not at it live yet. Um, but number two would have to be Comfortably Numb, you know, phenomenal song, beautiful lyrics, just overall perfect, you know, um, and Pink Floyd's so good at that, man. Everything they do somehow ends up being a beautiful experience, man. And there's not a band to me that touches it in terms of the feeling I get when I listen to them. Every song in every band has a different feeling, you know. You listen to Leonard Skinner, you get a totally different feeling. You listen to Elvis Presley, you get a totally different feeling. But Pink Floyd is the only band I've ever listened to that takes me into a different world. You know, it's almost like, am I in Earth? Am I in, you know, Mars? Am I in, you know, Saturn right now? It takes me into a different world. There's a lot of songs like Leonard Skinner's songs, like Zeppelin, Sabbath, that... 
it, you know, pumps me up and gives me all this energy and, you know, I'm ready to fight everybody, stuff like that. I'm ready to go out in the world. But then there's songs like Pink Floyd that make you think about your life and, and really make, really test your, um, your, your world knowledge, you know. It really tests your feelings um, and, and, and the struggles that you had and, and the present that you're going to have, the future. Um, and that's why Pink Floyd is so different, man. And number three, I would have to give it money. Um, you love all the different instruments in there. And, and that song was the first song to me that made me realize Pink Floyd is so different, man. Like all the different sounds that they have in that song is so unique, man. I don't know if any band in rock history has had all the different elements and all the different sounds in, in, into a song. It's crazy. You know, and, and that's what to me opened my eyes about how good that band was. Um, and so definitely that's my third song. Number four has to be time. The clock sounds just like money, just like money and all the different elements, all the clock sounds, stuff like that. Beautiful, man. Um, the fact that Pink Floyd, and to me, that's when I realized that Pink Floyd did what they want to do. They didn't care about the radio play. They didn't care about what people thought of them. And that's what I love about music. And that's what we lost in music, um, in today's generation. People make hits for the radio and nowadays the radio isn't popular so people make hits for Spotify and Apple Music and mostly TikTok and that's why I love doing these videos because I'm the youth I'm 20 years old I know what's going on in my generation and that's why I get to tell you guys what's going on so when I say TikTok that TikTok is what musicians make music for nowadays is true and that's as sad as it gets people make music for an app that you know has 30 second long videos. TikTok's known for 30 to, you know, anywhere from a second to 30 second videos. So what people do nowadays is they'll make a great hook or they'll do a great chorus. And the whole song's weak after that. They, they don't put work into the whole song. They put work into the 30 seconds of the song and it just creates an awful, awful song, man, that the first part of it, um, or like the hook or the chorus is great, man. But when you have the whole part and, and everything else, all the elements, it doesn't compare to, the, to this rock and roll music. Uh, it just doesn't at all, you know. Um, number four, without a doubt. Number four, probably another brick in the wall. Definitely has to be my top five. That's a beautiful song, man. Um, love, love that song. I think that's a perfect song all the way through. I love the school part of it. Um, you know, that is a connection with me as well. Um, you know, when everyone's in high school, you're rebellious, junior high, you're rebellious, um, stuff like that. So, um, you know, you feel like, why am I in school? Why do I have to do this type of stuff? And I completely connected with it. I thought it was a phenomenal song. Uh, again, like time and money, all the elements in that song are so beautiful and so unique. And, you know, that's again, another song that I realized Pink Floyd is very, very different. It's different than all the music I definitely have heard of. It's different than the rap and pop and stuff like that that I grew up on. I mean, I grew up on some rock and roll, but mostly it was rock, it was rap and, and pop. That's why when I heard this stuff, I threw rap out the window because Pink Floyd is a different world, man, compared to rap. It's a million times better than rap. So that's why I just threw it out the window, you know? Um, anyway, anyway, uh, and then number five, a great, a great gig in the sky. Definitely have to be that one. That song is beautiful, a beautiful track, love it. Um, without a doubt, gr Great Gig in the Sky is one of Pink Floyd's best. Um, that's why it's in my top five. Again, like the other ones, all the elements, man, all the different features that it has is crazy. And to me, the fact that Pink Floyd can even do one song that's as good as, um, you know, Wish You Were Here or Comfortably Numb. But the fact that they've done five, Five songs that are that good, just, I mean, it, it, it really separates them into a different world, man. You know, so, beautiful, that's my top five. Um, and then I also, before I end this one, to get into my top five live songs by Pink Floyd. Number one, definitely Comfortably Numb Live at Pulse. Number two, gonna be Comfortably Numb Live at Pompeii, and that was by David Gilmore. I thought he killed it, I was so proud of him. So proud of a guy that's that old to sing that well. To me, it has to be at number two. Because I've never heard... I mean, have you guys listened to the music nowadays? Listen to Axl Rose and his voice. Listen to Motley Crue's Vince Young. Listen to 
Um, there's so many singers I can, I can mention that their voices have just went away. And the fact that David Gilmore sounds that good, it baffles me. It truly does, you know? Um, number three, definitely Sorrow, Live at Pulse, without a doubt. Four is going to be another Brick in the Wall, Live at Pulse. And that video is going to be coming out. Hopefully it isn't blocked. But it's going to be coming out in the next week or two. Um, and then number five, I don't think I've heard five songs so far. So that's my top four. Yeah, I haven't heard I haven't had I haven't heard five songs so far that were live. That's my top four. Comfortably numb live at Pulse. Comfortably numb with David Gilmore live at Pompeii. Number three is going to be um, another brick of the wall live. And then four I'm going to have or three is going to be sorrow. Four is going to be another brick in the wall uh, live. So it's crazy, man, that Pink Floyd is this good, this phenomenal. Uh, my mom's favorites are pretty similar. Doubt is uh, Comfortably Numb Live at Pulse. Everyone that listens to this song loves it. It's crazy. Anybody of any age, of, of any ethnicity, of race, anything, any any religion, if they listen to Comfortably Numb Live at Pulse, everyone has the same reaction. And it's either like me, smiling, amazed, or, you know, it's like my mom. And my mom is different. She was smiling, amazed, but she really... He listens to the lyrics and the music very closely. So with her, it's more of a, you know, uh, just an emotional thing. You know, for me, it's more of a just shocked, you know, how they could do that for my mom. It's more of her thinking about her past and her future, stuff like that, and connecting it all together. Um, that's why I said about Pink Floyd, why it's so beautiful. You could have someone like me, you know, who listens to it more in the aspects of, of just the way it sounds, you know, more of the guitar and all the other instrumentations and also the lyrics. But my mom is only lyrics. So someone like her, but she's not only lyrics on the point where she doesn't care about the music. She listens to lyrics so closely and really thinks about her past and stuff like that in the lyrics. And that's why, to me, that's her favorite song. It's such a beautiful song, beautifully written. You guys love that song. I love it. It's my favorite live song ever. You know, so, yeah. Um, and definitely that's her favorite song. Her favorite studio song... Still, you know, arguing with her about that. She won't tell me. She loves them all. And, and the same with the live song. I was going to do my top five um, for my mom, but I talked to her before this video. She said, literally, my favorites come through on Live at Pulse. Nothing comes close to it. So, she, I mean, she loves Sorrow. She loves, you know, Another Brick in the Wall. She loves them. But she said, nothing comes close to come through on Live at Pulse. So, put number one, come through on Live at Pulse. And just uh, the others are honorable mentions. But for her studio song, her favorite studio song, it's different than me. Her favorite studio song is Comfortably Numb, the studio version. She loves Comfortably Numb. She truly loves that song, man. Um, so she likes, again, the live song is her favorite. And the studio version is her favorite studio version song. So thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Um, like I was saying, every video, there is a, if you can show my Patreon, it means a lot to me. Also, there's a tip feature next to the like and dislike button. All donations help. It's a way for, you know, YouTubers to be able to make some money. I don't do it for the money, but anything helps. So thank you guys for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below. And have a good day.